Welcome to our lecture online. Before we actually solve this particular line integral, it's the integral of the function 2 plus x squared y times ds, so we're going to integrate along a curve. The curve is defined by the upper half of a circle of radius 1 with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So when you see a problem like that, you may wonder, what does that really mean? How should I look at that? So the thing we're going to do first is we're going to define this equation right here and try to graph it. So the equation here is really z as a function of x and y, so it's the height above the x-y axis as a function of position x and y, and is defined as z equals 2 plus x squared y. So you can see that when x and y are 0, the height of z is 2 units above the origin. But as you go farther out, as x and y become larger, then of course the function will increase in height. So it starts at 2 in the middle here, and then it goes up as we go farther out. But if either x or y are 0, then the additional part here is going to be equal to 0, so the height is still going to be 2. So here you can see, when y is equal to 0, over here, we plug in 0 there, that the height has to be equal to 2 because x squared times 0 is always going to be 0. Over here, when x is equal to 0, that's also going to equal 0 because 0 times y is 0, and so we end up at a height of 2. But in between, you can see that as x and y values change, you're going to have a variation in the height. If we're going to use the parametric equations where we can actually find the height based upon the angle, we can then say, well, x can be defined as the cosine of theta, and y can be defined as the sine of theta, and then for various angles of, th of theta, for example, in this case, the angle would be 0 degrees, then here it would be 15 degrees, then it would be 30 degrees, and 45 degrees, and so forth, we can find the values of x and y in terms of theta, and that's what we've done right here. So when the theta is equal to 0, the cosine of 0 is equal to 1, so x equals 1, and in that case, the x squared would be 1 and y would be 0, so we multiply all this together, x squared y would be 0. At 15 degrees, the value is 0.24. At 30 degrees, the value is 0.375, as we plug in the correct values. You can see then, then this would then be added to the constant 2 for the various angles, and that's how we end up with the height along the edge here to define the path of the curve that we're going to take. Or in other words, what I should, not quite the curve. As we go along the circle, so we integrate along the circle, the height of the value z will change depending upon the angle. So basically what we're calculating when we integrate all the way around the circle, we're going to integrate the height and therefore we're going to integrate the total area. We're going to find out the total area around this edge here for all the various values of the angle from 0 to 2 pi. And so that's the visual, hopefully I'm giving you a visual perspective of what this problem is doing. So this defines the function z, which is the height above the xy plane. You can see that will change depending upon the angle. So as we plug in different values for theta, we'll get different values for x and y, and we can define what the height is. And then we integrate all the way around. Well, in this case, we only want to go half a circle, and that means we're going to integrate and get the area of this half of that curtain, so to speak, that hangs down from the value of the function as we integrate along half that circle. And so that's the conceptual perspective of what we're trying to do here. On the next video, we're actually going to integrate this and show you how to find the result of that particular line integral. And that's how it's done.